Hello, hi, uh, my name is Jerry Miller. I'm the founder of Trend Signal, the trader education company. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about US interest rate rises. So we've got the Fed meeting this week and also uh, GDP uh, data. Um, economists tend to talk about indicators or data releases as either being lagging or lagged or, or leading. Uh, and it's quite relevant to what's happening uh, this week. So really the big question I want to ask or pose this uh, start of this uh, discussion is what's the difference really between uh, lagged and leading uh, indicators and how they affect what we do. Uh, a lagged or lagging uh, indicator is a data release that really tells us what has happened uh, in the past. So for example with GDP data or gross domestic product uh, this report tells us what economic activity was in the previous quarter um, and in the case of the US they have three releases, uh, the advanced, the prelim and the, and the regular one. And this data does take a long time to, uh, to collate. Uh, and it, but if you think about it, it's collating all the value of goods and services um, generated in a particular quarter. And then it's released really just within four weeks, the very first reading. Uh, anyway, it is subject to revisions, etc. cetera. Um, it is useful. Uh, it's useful to the economists in tracking economic, the economy uh, and it, but it actually provides us as traders and investors with little insight into future economic activity. Uh, and obviously as traders, we're interested in where the markets are heading, uh, not where they've been. Uh, and that's obviously where leading indicators come in. Uh, central bank policy, for example, uh, will impact future economic activity. So you would describe any change in interest rates uh, as being a sort of a leading indicator. Uh, another leading indicator might be consumer sentiment. Uh, if consumers are happy, contented, they'll spend more. If they spend more, company revenues go up. Company revenues go up. Hopefully, they'll make more profits, and then that's reflected in uh, stock markets. Uh, so uh, that's a good example of a, of a leading uh, indicator. So uh, in this very, very important week, um, we're going to be discussing what's happening with the Federal Reserve and the rate setting committee called the FOMC or the Federal Open Market Committee. Um, the Fed has got to decide its priority when setting interest rates. Um, and the, the, the debate has been a little bit about price stability or the economy. Um, economists suggesting that if the Fed raise rates too far, it'll inevitably cause a recession. Um, but I, I think everyone who knows how the Fed operates knows that, they, that this, they've got two mandates. The, the first mandate is to maintain price stability. The other one is to foster full employment. Uh, they don't have a mandate to protect the economy per se. Um, and I think the, the Fed has uh, a lot of critics over the, the last six to nine months uh, have, you know, being charged with being behind the curve. And really, it's now having to grasp the nettle and really get ahead of uh, the curve. So I think it's very unlikely uh, that the Fed will pull its punches, uh, especially with inflation touching 9.1% a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I, I think um, it, it's almost inevitable, that obviously, that they're going to be raising rates significantly. The debate actually at the moment is, is it three quarters percent or 1%? So I, I'm just going to have a look at the, another screen to show you what the market is expecting. So here we have a, a screen uh, from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange they call it their Fed Watch tool. It's effectively the forward contracts, futures contracts um, that tell us what the market is expecting the uh, Fed funds rate to be on the date of each of the uh, following um, FOMC meetings uh, to, towards the, to the end of the year and beyond, actually. And so the screen we're looking at, at the moment is uh, the expectation for um, interest rates on the 27th of July. That's this coming Wednesday. Uh, and you can see with the target rate currently at 150 to 175 basis points, the market 75% probability of a three quarter of a percent rate rise. There's still a 25% chance of a full 1% uh, um, rise. Um, and I think in light of the uh, surprise jump in inflation from a couple of weeks ago to 9.1%, the, the futures actually implied a 1% rate rise the day after was on the cards. Uh, but that has sort of modified or that's reduced slightly. Uh, we had the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey that had reduced inflationary expectations, uh, which now... I think uh, suggests that 0.75% is the likely outcome of uh, the Federal Reserve's uh, rate decision. 
Still 25% probability though, more likely um, three quarters of a percent. So that's uh, interest rates um, and it's um, pretty much baked in, but the, the world and his wife will be watching this on um, uh, Wednesday uh, evening. It affects global equity markets, bond markets, commodities and foreign exchange markets. So it's absolutely key to, to, to every market, really. OK, uh, we talked about GDP. Let's have a quick look at the um, gross domestic product. Um, OK, having sort of discuss what's a lagging and leading indicator. Why, why, why do we even bother with the GDP data? It is a quite a headline grabber though. Um, and the US has sustained a, a contraction in the economy in the first quarter. Uh, and some economists are also forecasting a, a contraction in the second quarter between, that's between April and June. Um, the sort of informal description of a recession is two quarters of negative growth. So obviously, if we have Q2, that's the April, June uh, period, if that is going to be uh, negative growth, that would actually be the US being in recession. Um, does it matter that the US could be in a recession? I, I think most economists actually will say no. Uh, the second quarter ended uh, at the, the end of June, and we're unlikely to know the true picture until, I guess, probably mid-August by the time we get the final data, by which time the US may well not be in a recession. So uh, GDP is not something that central bankers use to determine future interest uh, rate policy, um, but it is headline grabbing. Uh, you know, you can imagine the headlines. If there is a second quarter of negative growth, it'll be US in recession, and that'll be splashed all over the world's medias. And uh, in reality, events will have moved on. But of course, words matter. Uh, and um, when you read uh, your economy might be in a recession as a consumer in the US, that's quite a psychological blow. You might affect, uh, could, and in all likelihood would affect your um, your spending. So there we go, GDP. We, uh, we'll uh, see how that comes out. But we are expecting a positive number, but there is still a probability of it being a negative number. Okay, thanks very much. Bye for now.